Hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be explaining a question that came in from The Endless River in my Twitch chat. And they asked, what is the difference between the return annotation arrow none versus arrow no return? So we're going to explain the difference between those two. So let's jump into it. All right, so uh, to, to start, I'm talking about type annotations today, so if you're not familiar, well, I don't have a video yet for it, but I should make a video about type annotations. I'll probably do that at some point. Um, but we're going to be talking about the difference between uh, the return annotation none and the return annotation no return. So first, we're going to import no return just so that we can demonstrate the difference between the two. So we have function f, which returns none, and fun function g, which returns no return. Now, uh, it, it's a common mistake that I see to apply no return to functions which don't return anything. And the actual correct annotation for those is arrow none. Uh, no return is a little bit special. It means to signify that the function, like if you call this function, you will never get execution out of it. Like it will, it will never return anything. Like, not not even an implicit return, which we'll talk about in a second. And there's kind of three cases that I know of that no return is applicable for. Uh, so the first one is that it always raises. So this is maybe like raise assertion error. Why did you call me? Uh, or something like that. Or you know, not implemented or or stuff like that. That's one case for no return. Uh, another case for no return is it calls a function that, uh, you know, like replaces out the current process. So one example of that is uh, like, um, let's see, calls exec. Um, so exec, uh, at least on Posix platforms, it's not the same on Windows platforms. Um, on Windows, it does completely nonsense stuff like, you know, background a process and immediately exit zero, which is definitely not what you want, but that's, that's Windows for you. Um, so here's like an example which runs echo, uh, echo high. Now, exec VP is the uh, vector version of this that does a path lookup. So the V is like vector and P is path, and this is how would you how you would call the echo executable with with high in it and this is no return because exec vp actually replaces the entire process that's running with this other process so um you you would never you'd never be able to return <laughs> anything from this function uh and then the third form what is the third form oh the third form is something that um you see a lot in like web servers and stuff um and I'll call this the loops forever approach of this. And one example of this is like, say you're working with a web framework that might do something like this. Of course, it would probably be a little bit more sophisticated than this. Um, and it might do like, um, you know, request equals get request. And then, um, I don't know, handle response request or something like that. Uh, where like you might have like a web framework that does this, but you're constantly looping forever in here. Um, and so this this function never returns anything. So those are kind of the three cases. There's probably more, uh, but these are the ones that I remembered. And when I explained this on stream, I think those are the three examples that I used as well. Um, I don't see this one too often. Usually you end up calling some other thing that, that uh, also no returns. I guess there's a fourth case. <laughs> Uh, and that's calling some other function that is also no return. So like um, if we call loops forever in here, you know, loops forever is no return. And so that makes this function also no return. And the type checker, at least my pie in some cases, will be able to use this information to ensure that that branch of code, um, you know, is, is kind of a dead end and like would never influence the return value. Uh, so the, the type checker can look into that from there. Uh, I guess that, that kind of covers no return. So let's talk about arrow none and where this would come into play. Let's actually just move this down to the bottom. Um, so now we're gonna look at two different, um, two different cases here. We're gonna look at functions which have no return statements and oh, 
has no return statements. And we're gonna look at another function which explicitly returns none. Not too many line breaks. Explicitly returns none. I return none. I'll capitalize that. Return none. There we go. So these are kind of like the two cases where you would have for arrow none. Uh, you'll also see this in like, you know, the double under net for classes and other stuff like that. Uh, but you might ask, well, Anthony, this one doesn't return none. It doesn't return anything at all. And this is like the, the primary source of the confusion here. So Python actually inserts an implicit return none at the end of every function. Uh, and we can actually see this by using a, a pretty cool tool that I might uh, talk about in another video called the disassembler. And you can import dis and uh, call dis.dis on stuff. Notice I ran this t.py in interactive mode, so we have access to all these functions. And we're going to disassemble this has no return statements function. Uh, show how that works. And you might be a little bit surprised to, to learn, and this is probably where I'll <laughs> go into more details in another video, uh, but Python actually compiles all of its code down to a stack-based language, which has these particular opcodes. And the opcodes interact with uh, a stack and you know, change how, uh, like that, that's how the implement, uh, implementation of execution happens. Lawn people are here. Ah! <laughs> Hopefully you guys can't hear the lawn people, but I can definitely hear them. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's talk about how this function executes. Uh, so you can imagine that there's like a stack here, and it starts kind of empty. The first thing that we do is we load a global. So that puts the global named print into our stack. So uh, load global is kind of like stack dot push print. Uh, pushes JavaScript. <laughs> what am I doing? Append is is Python. That's what happens when you switch languages all the time. Uh, then load const is going to do a similar thing. It's going to load this constant string from, um, in this case, the code object, but that's implementation details. And so again, it's going to do kind of a, a stack append here. Uh, and then it's going to do call function one with a uh, and the one here is the number of arguments that it's going to um, call with. So the way this kind of works is you would, for this number of arguments, pop that from the stack. So you would do args equals stack dot pop uh, for i in range. Of course, this one's not so interesting. Um, probably not i, because you don't actually care about the variable. But this is the number of arguments we're going to pop from our stack. So that'll get us our arguments. And then we'll get our function as well by doing stack.pop. And then we're going to call the function with those arguments and use push. Stack.push func and call it with the arguments. Uh, <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> Append. That's what we want. Um, and so that, that called this function and appended the return value there. Uh, now, of course, this function was print, and so it had its side effect of printing. Uh, the next thing that it does is pop top. Uh, I believe this is it just like discarding some value from our stack. So if we look at our stack right now, it has the return value from calling this print function, which is none, because print returns none as well. Uh, so we'll pop the top of the stack just by calling pop. And so you can see that that removed that element from the stack. And the last thing it does, and this is the implicit return none. This is kind of the magic that I wanted to explain. <laughs> you can ignore all the rest of it. If, if you get nothing else, this is the important part, uh, that a function without a return statement will implicitly return none. So the last thing it does is it loads the constant. So that's something like stack.append the constant none, and then return value. So this is, you know, like return, but can't just do return at a... Um, at a, an interactive prompt, so it essentially does stack.pop and then returns that value back. Um, but if we, you know, pop pop the value from the stack, you can see that we have this return done. And that's, oh man, you guys can't see that. Dang it. <laughs> Let me re-disassemble this just so we get that, so I don't have to retake this video. Because uh, you're, you're missing some of the, uh, some of the, you know, side stuff over here because my face is in the way. <laughs> I could just move my face. That would work too. Ah! 
<laughs> okay, so so what you were missing before is kind of like the the implicit arguments that were happening here. But anyway, uh, that's kind of the difference between no return and none. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, I will follow up at some point and do a type annotations video and probably also another one that explains the disassembler in more detail because this, you know, <laughs> not that much detail, but. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have additional ideas for videos, leave them in the comments or show up at my stream. And looking forward to answering or explaining more stuff for you guys. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one.